And this afternoon, Christian Imiabua is retiring from office today as Ghana's Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. In the last five years, the 70-year-old leader on the bench presided over a number of significant cases, including the landmark 2020 uh, presidential election petition, which upheld President Akufuado as the winner of the poll, which was fiercely contested by the NDC's John Dramani. Mahama Enimiabua is living on his desk now, a stockpile of petitions and, uh, of course, a lot of them on the need to open up legal education, which has been criticised for, for turning a blind eye to the situation. Let's get more from our legal correspondent, uh, Joseph Akable, who's been in court all day, also monitoring the last day of the Chief Justice in court. Joe, let's start off uh, with the Chief Justice himself. He's leaving office today at age 70. What was the mood like in uh, court when, of course, many saw him, at least for the last time, uh, adjudicating matters? Uh of the focus has been he has actually spent most of the day at his secretariat uh, where he's been engaging various uh, individuals and the staff over there who is is pretty much well known within the judicial service circles that uh, this is uh, his last day in office and so he's pretty much been uh, there are the usual goodbyes that have been said i mean we understand he actually wrapped up the cases he was supposed to sit on yesterday and so today actually uh, even though there were some matters which he had earlier on been participating in in fact one of those cases where was agenda indefinitely and so he actually did not come to the courtroom at all and spent uh, their day at his secretariat but the mood generally at the premises has been that of reflection for many and uh, those who are also around looking forward to uh, what life will look after a chief justice question in your unfortunately mm. For him on the day that is his last day is the day that the judicial service staff association of ghana have declared a nationwide strike uh, raising issues about a salary which they expect government and uh, president akufado for that mm. matter to approve definitely we're we'll, we'll going to the details of uh, why there's a strike being declared today uh, but talking about enim yeboa himself uh, and many will be looking back to that transitional period where he was also taking over uh, from Sofia Akufo as the uh, then Chief Justice. He, he broke that jinx of a series of females uh, taking over the apex court. What was the difference like at the time? I mean, it was, it was interesting because we had gone from um, almost 50 plus years where we didn't have a female Chief Justice at all. Then we had... Uh, Justice Chief Justice Georgina would come in around 2007. She served all the way through a uh, president. So you're, she was appointed by President Kufo. That was President Mills. Uh, there was President Mahama. Then President Akufado came in. Then Chief Justice Georgina would exit. Then another female came in, uh, Chief Justice Sophia Ekufo. Uh, then when she was exiting, interestingly, the trend, like you said, ended. And so what we are, we couldn't do for 50, almost 50 plus years, we did it twice then we shifted to a chief justice we see in your so it was quite an interesting appointment uh, in that uh, many thought that i mean maybe yes we have done a bit of the women empowerment as uh, we had wanted to do and we had broken the records but more importantly was the fact that all these individuals who had had the benefit of being the head of the judiciary were deserving individuals competent in their own rights as judges who had worked and rising through the ranks to get to this particular level. So it was uh, that of excitement. And it was also uh, what many would call a transitional phase of sorts. Because if you recall, uh, Chief Justice Georgina Woods era, there was a, the latter part that was uh, witnessed this whole unasked judicial expose. And so she had also started a series of reforms to try and cleanse the image of the judiciary. Then Chief Justice Sophia Kufu came for a very brief period, and her period mainly centered on controversies surrounding legal education, right. huge agitations all over the place. And so, I mean, many were looking forward to what will Chief Justice we see in India about do? Will there be significant changes to how legal education is run? I mean, but what we can report is that at least since he took over till now, there has not been that remarkable significant change in how legal education is managed in the manner that many had been calling for for many years now. What we did see is that there were increase in enrollment. I mean, the numbers went up. And so that is how come uh, there wasn't much agitation as we saw during the era of uh, Chief Justice Sophia to the extent that students poured out onto 
the streets, but there are still teething issues. There was the law village thing that government cut short for, which yes. was supposed to be completed in record time. A, a promise which was made to, to complete that within record time. That was never fulfilled. Yeah, I mean, that is still outstanding. The last time I, I passed by that particular facility, I mean, it's, 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 it doesn't look like anything that can be completed anytime soon. Mm. And so legal education still remains a very thorny issue. Then, in, the, in one of the Chief Justice's very last minute acts, he made this comment about the continuous education for lawyers, uh, which became quite controversial in a couple of days. But in that send up dinner, where President Akufadu described Chief Justice in India as an exceptional uh, Chief Justice, uh, the Chief Justice did indicate that he still stands by those comments that he made and that mm. he thinks that continuous education is something that is important. Right. I mean, I okay. think later on we, we can touch on a bit about yeah. the image of the judiciary. Uh, precisely. It's a, it's a crucial point to be uh, bringing up now. Uh, plus, as we're hearing of this um, industrial action by the Judicial Service, uh, we'll, we'll get into the details. Blake, just hold on for us. It's the reason for which I want to bring in the PR uh, for the Ghana Bar Association. Uh, they've been crucial in this process monitoring what's been happening to the bar, to the bench, uh, all throughout the reign of uh, Chief Justice Anim Iyeboa. Uh, thank you, uh, Sylvia Kujia, for your time here on The Poll. So you were just listening to uh, our legal affairs correspondent point out a number of issues that will be on the desk of the incoming uh, Chief Justice. It's going to be another female, hopefully. We're not sure of what the parliamentary processes will determine. Uh, but let's look at Chief Justice Anin Yeboah, his living office today. Uh, what comes to mind when, when, of course, that name is mentioned, uh, Anin Yeboah? Hello, Mr. Kujia, if you can hear me, kind, kind, kindly unmute um, so we can, we can hear the point you're making. We, we, can, we can hear you now. As is any right? is one of the people that uh, any lawyer where he saw who describe as a, an embodiment of civil procedure when it comes to legal practice. And uh, during his tenure as Chief Justice, we've seen a lot of infrastructural development by way of uh, uh, courtrooms. A number of courtrooms have been built. As we speak today, we have a permanent court of appeal at uh, uh, Sylvia, could you, are, you, are you with us? Uh, it appears that we're having some challenge uh, connecting to him there, but Blay is still with us. Um, and Aka Blay, of course, uh, he was just talking there about some of the achievement. Um, j just before we come back to you, Blay, uh, let me hear one more time from Siva Kujia. If you can hear me, sir, you, you were pointing out uh, some of the uh, achievements that Justice Anin Yeboah br brought to bear uh, during, during his reign as the Chief Justice. Can you hear me now? I didn't hear that. I think it again. Yes, I, I was saying we, we lost you briefly. So if you could just start start off with a point for I, us. I, I was saying that when it comes to legal practice, it's an astute legal practitioner and also a judge. In the realm of uh, civil procedure, only a few people can, can, can compare with him. He is one of the revered persons when it comes to knowledge of the law, especially application of civil procedure. And I also said that when it comes to courtroom infrastructure under his regime, uh, so far is about the best chief justice that has witnessed who, under whose reign we have seen a lot of development of court rooms. To the extent that we even have a permanent court of appeal sitting in uh, Kumasi now serving the uh, northern sector of the country. And the judges are sitting there, bungalows have been built for them. And uh, not only that, we have a high court judges to bungalows improve. So he's done a lot, and uh, we expect that a lot will be done after he's left too. Uh, the criticism that often comes up, uh, and, and this is not just unique to Anini Boa, but of course during his reign, uh, the push came really strong. The, the issue about uh, legal education reforms. You, you and the Ghana Bar Association have al also had uh, cause of concern about the need to do some changes uh, and for action to take place. Uh, do, do you feel that looking back, he, he may have some regrets about not necessarily fixing the problem because the problem is still there? Oh, I am not sure that you should have any regret and anybody should have any regret. It's a national issue. You know, you may have ideas, but if resources are not there, what do you do about it? It is not your fault. At least I can say that, that during his tenure as a chief justice, uh, a new bill 
legal profession act, uh, bill has been proposed and is before parliament. And uh, if, you, if you, you're talking about law school admissions, I think under his tenure, you can see that it's an, an increase in en enrollment. It doesn't mean that those uh, who acted as chief justices in the past didn't do much. It has an infrastructural problem, and it all boils down to money. Uh, I heard your reporter talk about the law village. Yes, sword was cut, but where is the money to do the construction? It's still there. I passed there this morning. The project as it is, is still there. Nothing is happening. All because we lack money. So if funds are made available for expansion of classrooms, lecture theaters, I believe that anybody else who passes to go to law school to do the professional law course will be admitted. Uh, and now that controversial decision of a mini post call, or you know the, the, the legal uh, term or technical definition for that, he's been uh, criticized for even tightening legal education as he exits office. Just a, a couple of months or days to leaving office, he's now bringing up this uh, decision, which, uh, of course, you and the Ghana Bar have welcomed. The, the claim is that Eni Nieboa has not done much in terms of liberalizing the space for more people to become lawyers. I don't think that. I don't think so. That is totally incorrect. As I said, what would it benefit by not allowing people to gain admission to law school? A simple a pro a problem of space. There is no space. If you're saying that he didn't do much, or people say that, according to you, he didn't do much. Over the people, last year alone, yeah, last year, about 850 people were called to the bar. That has never happened before. Even many call that they did just, uh, I think, at the beginning of this year, at uh, this month, 196 or so were called to the bar. Put together is about 1,000 plus. That has never happened in a legal year. So it can never be true that he didn't do much to open up uh, opportunities for people uh, to be trained as lawyers. That can never be true. And now we're looking forward. But just before we look at uh, who's next and what the next steps may be, you as the Ghana Bar Association, um, is there any special role you would want the Chief Justice, now that he's exiting office, to play, at least uh, j just to aid the justice system and justice delivery within the country? Is there any expectation of it? Well, no, we have always seen our retired judges as a, a pool of resource for our use. Uh, Last Friday evening, we had a welfare dinner in Hezana, and the President of the Republic was there. I remember my president, the Ghana Bar Association's president, in his speech, he made it clear to him that he may have retired, but we we'll always call upon him. They have always said that resource persons, especially somebody like Justice Niyebua, even he, before he became Chief Justice, he was always a resource person at our annual conferences when it comes to our continuing legal education programs. So we we'll always uh, fall on their expertise and the experience to, uh, should and need be so that we advance the system and the course of the nation as far as the justice delivery is concerned. The expectation about uh, whoever takes over as the next Chief Justice, and that's why I want to, just, Savia, just hold on for me briefly. I want to bring in Joseph Akaple because uh, you've been monitoring the space. Uh, these new, um, of course, uh, decisions that have been taking, I was just referring to the, the uh, is it post mini call? You, you know the exact name for it, and the controversy that is generating. Are you, are you referring to the continuing legal that, yeah, Yes, precisely. That, that's, that's the name for it. And Akable, you, you've been monitoring the kind of hit that alone is generating just on the eve of his uh, re uh, I mean, retirement. Uh, just bring us up to speed with what's happening within uh, the space and how stakeholders are concerned about this. I mean, I think, think um, Xavier could, could he, would even touch on that further because even at the event they had in his honor, the Chief Justice reiterated that point again about the importance of continuous legal education because he believes that uh, the law is a, is, is, a, is a very vital profession such that you, you cannot just be done uh, with the processes, get called to the bar and without any form of uh, continuous education taking place. I think the controversy generally surrounded the initial publication, some of which the judicial service had to issue a statement to clarify that it did not mean that the lawyers would be required to sit in a classroom and take an exam of sorts. And that was the initial publication that was a bit more problematic. But I know that I've seen the GBA, some publications to the effect that the GBA is not against, in principle, the point about the continuous legal education, which the Chief Justice touched on and reiterated that that uh, farewell dinner that was held in the Senate. And beyond that, looking into the future, the expectations on the next 
Chief Justice. Um, we have a nominee, correct? The President has nominated someone. Yes, I mean, Parliament has been informed of the nomination of uh, Justice Getu Tokonu as the Chief Justice. In fact, in a letter that uh, the President wrote to Parliament, he did indicate that they should expedite the processes uh, leading to her approval, vetting and approval, I mean, because of uh, the, the issue of the vacuum that could potentially be created. But we know that that has not happened. And from our understanding, uh, we are told that uh, the senior most uh, judge in this instance, uh, Justice Jones Goche, will be acting pending the conclusion of those processes. And so, I mean, Justice Getri Tokonu, another very brilliant judge who has risen through the ranks and has been nominated. And so it's another individual that a lot more people are also looking forward to at her taking mm. uh, the judiciary to the next level by way of reforms and uh, looking on the issue of uh, legal education, some of which ideally will rest at the feet of government because of the need to provide resources for it to get to the next step that a lot of people are, are, have been clamoring for over the period. Mm. And Blair, there's a lot happening in courts this year about the strike. We'll talk about that shortly. But Sylvia Kujia, as we wrap up with you, the expectations going forward of this uh, incoming chief justice. We're not sure uh, of what the parliamentary procedures will be in terms of affirming her, but if she does get the opportunity, what's the expectation from uh, Chief Justice Gertrude if she becomes the chief justice? Oh, I, I think that uh, let us not jump the gun. Yeah. Uh, let us wait if uh, she gets, stills through. Uh, then we can comment on uh, whatever our expectations are of, of her. I think that would be fair. But just to say that we welcome the CPD, that is a continued devo a professional development of lawyers. It, it's something that we've, we've always done, just that the new dimension is that it's now going to count towards your, the renewal of your practicing license. And the Chief Justice didn't say this in a vacuum. There's actually an ally, ally 2423. That makes it, 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 it makes it compulsory going forward that a lawyer should accumulate a minimum of 12 credit hours of CPD, that is continual development, uh, continual professional development mm. training, to be able to have his license renewed. So it's something we've been doing all these years. Even today, 12.30 or so, Greater Accra did one. So there's nothing new about it. Just at this time, we want to make it compulsory because the law is a living profession. You can't say that what you learn today is the same tomorrow. Or what you learned yesterday is to, it will be to, the same today. No. So as the, system, the times go down and things change, we need to update and upgrade ourselves as lawyers. Mm. So we welcome it who has who had me. But nobody is going to write any exams. Mm. Nobody will write any exams. So, so is it the case you that you're, you're checking standards or you're checking the new trends in, within the profession? Standards and new trends because, blessed, times are changing. All that island some 18 years ago, many of them have changed. Even I speak today, there are bills in parliament making amendments and even, uh, how do you call it, repealing uh, uh, existing laws. If you don't educate yourself further, how do you get to know that those things have happened? Or there's been a decision on an application of a, a section of a law, a portion of a law by the Supreme Court or any of the superior courts. How then do you get to know that this is the way you have to go? It is just in-service training, and I think that in every profession is, is necessary. If no profession wants it at all, for the legal profession we want, because we know that we, serve, we play an important role, role in society. Mm. Your farewell message to any Nyeboa? Oh, I wish him well. He should have a good rest. He's a brilliant judge, very hardworking. I think that everybody as a lawyer mm. likes him. Everybody likes him, just as his colleagues. So we wish him well. And he should live long so that we can tap from his rich resources and uh, experience. Thank you. Grateful. Sylvia Kujia speaks for the Ghana Bar Association. Uh, let's uh, move on to what's happening today. And just as the Chief Justice uh, is preparing to park his bag out of office, the uh, Judicial Service Staff Association are equally following him, but doing so on grounds that they are not happy about a number of developments uh, and when it comes to their conditions. So let, let's get more uh, from Joseph Akable, who's still with us. Joe, the immediate concerns of the group. Let's start with the first one. I mean, so the main issue has been the fact that uh, they have been engaging governments. They have raised issues about uh, the need for their salaries to be adjusted. They, they say that per the law, the president is supposed to 
approve of that upon the recommendations coming in from the judicial council mm. and and their point is that that has been done the approval has not been done and it has not taken effect and they make reference to their colleagues in other uh, the public service in terms of other departments uh, and you recall that the conditions of 11 allowance could at 30 percent when governments withdrew it the JUSAC members make the point that it adjusted the salary of the other some of the other public sector workers and for them they are what was recommended and approved by the judicial council has not been approved and so that has not taken effect you recall that they actually threatened two weeks ago to embark on an industrial action the national labor commission wrote to them they were supposed to have a meeting with the national labor commission and government we understand that just a single government representative showed up at the very tail end of that particular meeting they were asked to engage and come back on 24th may even though we understand later on at the NLC, we do that particular directive, but they nonetheless held on and waited till mm. uh, 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 today and coming to the conclusion right. that uh, once nothing has been done, and today being 24th May, they have decided to declare the strike. I mean, there are some serious allegations of bias that they level against the National Labor Commission, specifically the executive director. I, th I think those are matters that Justice uh, Yakub Yakubu Abdullah, uh, Yakub Abdullah, uh, the general secretary of uh, JUSAC, he'll be touching on further. Okay, let's get to it then. Abdullah Yakub, who's the uh, General Secretary of the, of the JUSAC, fortunately is joining us. He's on with us, so Blay, just stay on. Um, and Abdullah, many are wondering why you'd choose, uh, of all days, today to strike, uh, particularly when you're bidding farewell to the leader of the Apex Court and, by extension, the judiciary. You, you, you don't believe in justice in Iyabwa? Is that what the signal you're sending across? Abdullah, uh, kindly unmute Abdullah so we can get the point you're making. Uh, let's let's deal with that quickly, and let's see if this time around we can hear you. Abdullah, are you with us. Yes. Uh, good evening to you, and thanks for the opportunity. And good evening to staff of the judicial service. In fact, my Lord Justice Indiye Boa is our father, and we love him so so much. So the strike we've declared today has nothing to do with him. Of course, after today, he is no longer in charge of the judiciary and the judicial service. We have, uh, I'm happy your correspondent gave trajectory of events where we started up to where we are today. We've decided to exercise what we will call enough patience until when we could no longer hold it. And that's our elders who say, you push somebody to the wall and you keep pushing, the person can no longer it and will be forced to take an action that would be unfavorable. So it is not something that we are doing that has to do with my Lord uh, Chief Justice and okay. India Boys exit from the state. Let's get to the concerns you're raising about your conditions and why, first of all, you believe that the NLC hasn't been fair to you. On what grounds are you making these claims? Very good. I'll begin from the very day that we notified them of our industrial action. They first wrote to us, indicating, advising us not to embark on industrial action without providing a clear roadmap to us to how they intend to resolve the issue. And we disagreed with them in my letter to the executive secretary to the commission. Then they served as the same ones to appear. The same ones were served on us, the judicial, management of the judicial service, the office of the chief of staff, the minister of finance, and the minister of labor. For us to appear last week on 10th, uh, two weeks ago, on 10th of May 2023, we appeared with management. But the side of government, Office of President, Minister of Labor and Finance, none of them appeared on that day. And as proceedings were ongoing, you could see the chairperson of the Labor Commission holding brief for the government side, even when they were not there. You could hear him making remarks, such as the government, you know, government is busy. That is why they are unable to be with us today. So we should also, from management, the recommendation of the Judicial Council was sent to the president some 20 days ago. And they described it as just 20 days ago. And the president needed time to study the recommendations of the council before they could give an approval. And we wondered where the council was getting this information from. 
when somebody from the government side appeared, where were they getting the briefing from government that government needed time to study this one from? Which judge will sit on a matter and hold brief for a party who chooses not to come to the meeting at all, for the hearing at all? It was at the same time that government did not even see the need to write to the commission to explain why they are unable to appear before the commission on the 10th. The interesting part was that even when government was not coming, and they were going to later, somebody from the Ministry of Labor joined us, a deputy director, of course. Then we requested that, please, give us two days adjournment. We'll meet government and come and report. And they said no. We said, add weekends to it because we know what our problem is. We know how we are suffering. So give us the up to weekends to do a report on Monday. They said no. And indicated that this is only on Wednesday. I see. Uh, okay. Uh, but... but yeah, I get the point you're making, but but then the the concern now is about what it will take to to bring you back. I mean, to to work. On what grounds will you return? Judicial service staff will return. Abdullah, it appears we've, we've lost you there briefly. You, you're making the point that you return when? We'll return to work if and only if the President of the Republic of Ghana approves and pay us the new or reviewed salaries with all the areas from January up to the month of approval. That is the only thing that will let us call off the strike and then come back to work. Until that is done, our members are staying away. Are you mindful of the implications um, on IE justice delivery and, and what may happen to our courts? In fact, it is of serious concern to us. If we were to follow our timeline, this strike would have been declared last Friday. But because we are mindful of the implications of our strike on delivery of justice, the national security, and the nation's general interest, we decided to hold on for that long time. Even when our members were pushing us to go on strike, we still decided that we would exercise that vision just in the nation's interest. The Labor Commission gave 14 days. Within that 14 days, nobody from government engage us to resolve the matter within 14 days. And if government side decided not to care about our welfare and went by the way that they have gone about things, when we are now taking decisions like this, then government side should be blamed if citizens of Ghana go through difficulties because they are unable to access justice in Ghana, but not you, sir. So, in effect? In effect, we are staying at home. We aren't coming back. Until our demands are met. Uh, I wish I could solve your problem, so you don't. But anyway, we'll wait to see uh, what then happens after deliberations. Are you open to any form of negotiations? For instance, if you're called by the Labour Commission uh, to, to enter into some further discussions with, with the employer? I'll be very frank with you. If the Labour Commission pay their posture, we are not comfortable being with them. They aren't even supposed to come. The issue is about Article 149 of the Constitution. And the president knows that. The AG knows that. The ministries knows that. So if they want this problem to be solved, it's not about the Labour Commission. They don't give us the approval. Mm. The one who gives us the approval should come and tell us that this is the recommendation that has been sent by the Judicial Council to them. And they are going to approve it on this day or this time. Then we call up the strike and then come to work. And then we get the money paid to us. As simple as that. After the Labour Commission, I'm not sure they... I'm not All sure right. they should invite us because they know what the solution is. They can't leave the solution and keep chasing uh, is something different, Think, uh, pretending as if they're solving the problem. I see. Grateful uh, for your time. Uh, but is there any message uh, for, the, for the Chief Justice as, as he uh, retires today? Wow. In fact, he's, uh, he's somebody that the staff of the judicial service are going to miss so much. You could read from the faces of staff that they were so sad when his tenure of office was coming to an end because he is somebody who has held every staff of the service together. Busak decided to give him an honor as the most labor friendly chief justice in the history of the judiciary. And as far as our work is concerned, he is somebody who will not intimidate staff whenever you embark on actions to demand what is due you. He understands that you need to sit together, talk, and then he pushed for issues for staff of the service. So we are going to miss him so dearly, so, so dearly. It is our prayer that the good Lord will follow him and then bless him wherever he is going to be. The good Lord will grant him good health and will continue to be in touch with him even though he is no longer with the service. Mm. But not a, a, a fair way of saying goodbye, though, Abdul uh, Yakubu. Thank you for joining us. He's the Secretary of JUSEC.
and uh, a lot more happening in court because the cultivation of marijuana remains an offence in Ghana as the Supreme Court has in its majority 5-4 decision affirmed its judgments which questioned Parliament's decision to allow the production for industrial and medicinal purposes, uh, mar marijuana. Now, portions of uh, the Narcotics Control Commission Act allowed the uh, Minister for Interior and uh, the ministers uh, responsible to grant licenses for the cultivation of weed. A private citizen, uh, Ezome uh, Manan, took the matter to the Apex Court, insisting that Parliament was not transparent in passing such a law. The court in July 2022 upheld this view and struck out the portion of the law. The Attorney General filed processes asking that uh, the court sets aside this own, their own decision. Well, this request was not granted. Legal Affairs Correspondent Joseph Agablay has more on this for us. Uh, Joseph Akable is uh, still with us. Uh, unfortunately, we're able to get you uh, a wrap of what transpired in courts. But, Blay, if you can hear me, uh, the, the decisions leading to, um, obviously, th there's a uh, landmark ruling, we need to call it, because uh, the decision was made by Parliament. The AG is seeking to set aside the court's own decision. Uh, why is the court not departing from, from the earlier ruling? I mean, the point that the justices made was that a review jurisdiction is a very uh, limited window in that it's not an opportunity for parties to really litigate a matter. I mean, in simple terms, what the case of Ezwami Manan was, was the fact that under Article 106 A and B of Ghana's constitution, if a bill is to be sent to Parliament to pass a law, it's supposed to have a memorandum that accompanies it. This is simply a document that explains what this law seeks to do. And so he took the matter to court to say that, look, the memorandum that was sent to Parliament concerning the Narcotic Control Commission Act did not make provision or make it give any indication of any move by government to allow the cultivation of marijuana for medicinal and industrial purposes. They allege that during the consideration of this bill in Parliament, uh, just about when the law was going to be passed, the Member of Parliament raised the issue and suggested a possible amendment to allow the cultivation for medicinal and industrial purposes. They make the point that it wasn't subject to any proper debate, few contributions, and within less than 30 minutes, the law, the amendment was, was approved, and that became the Section 43 that was passed by Parliament eventually. And so the argument that they put before the Supreme Court last year was that for such a significant law, when the bill went to Parliament, Parliament should have been aware that this is a bill that is going to allow for such cultivation. Then citizens can make inputs about it. Then the debate can be had for it to be passed. But no one in the country, they made a point of deal. And the Supreme Court agreed with this particular view. Interestingly, blessed, it was a 4-3 decision. So that was how tight this particular decision was. And so the AG took the view that no, he believes that the court got it wrong and that he takes the view that it cannot be the case that the constitution entrusts parliament with legislative functions. And when parliament is carrying out its function, anytime it wants to make any amendments to any bill that is before it, it needs to now pause and have a memorandum prepared and brought before it can do so. Uh, but the Supreme Court today, by a 5 4 decision, so the initial one was 4 3, then two judges. Uh, joined the panel this time around to make the panel a nine-member panel. Then by 5-4 decision, the Supreme Court says, no, our initial decision was still correct and we've not been convinced enough uh, to set that decision aside. And so it, it, in, in simple terms, you cannot cultivate marijuana in Ghana still as the law was, and you still cannot cultivate it for medicinal and industrial purposes. Mm, Far-reaching implications, I, get, I, I guess. How about um, the individual? Uh, at the center of this, uh, the private citizen who, who went to court over this um, whole issue? I mean, his side, they are excited by the decision. Uh, he was not personally present in court, but was represented by the lawyer, Efiba Emihe, and they say that they are very much satisfied with this particular decision, per what they said in open court. And, and it's the arguments that they made that the courts agreed with them to the effect that there's no reason for the courts to depart mm. from 
8th July 2022 decision blessed. And run us through the judges, um, those who formed the panel uh, through, through, throughout the entire case. Now we, we know it's an appeal, so obviously uh, the panel has been enlarged to nine. Uh, do we know, have an idea of uh, the justices who, who sat on this case? And so the five who took the majority view on this review decision uh, were Justices Jose Doche, Professor Kote, uh, Maria Mowusu, Professor Henrietta Mensabunsu and Emmanuel Yonikuledi. And so they are the five that uh, took the view that uh, the decision should be allowed to stand. The new judge in this particular one is Justice Maria Mowusu. The remaining four were part of the other panel that made the 4-3 decision. And so Justice Maria Mowusu right. who joined the panel as the additional to agree with them. In terms of the minority, mm. uh, they are Justices Lovelace Johnson, Amadou Tanko, Samuel Esiedu, and George Coomson, they formed the minority. It is interesting to point out that Justice Lovelace Johnson is the new judge. So Justice Lovelace Johnson and Maria Mousu are the two new that joined. Interestingly, Justice Samuel Siedu and George Coomson are also new judges because two other judges on the original panel retired. Mm. Uh, that is Justice Agnes Doji and Justice right. Nene. So they were replaced by these two new judges as well. Quite an interesting day in court. Joseph Kable, grateful for your time here on The Pulse. So there's a lot coming up your way. Next is a research pointing out that there is sex for jobs going on in Ghana. As to how that's happening, we'll tell you about it when we get back. Please stay with us.